we could talk about calibers, cartridges, guns, and scopes all day long. But the reality is that those things don't kill animals. In reality, bullets do the actual killing. So bullets are arguably the most important choice you can make for your hunt. Unfortunately, many hunters are so caught up in sexy new cartridges and the latest and greatest scopes that they completely underestimate the importance of a simple bullet. I'm going to start this video by giving you a spoiler. There is no best hunting bullet. That's right, I said it. There is no best hunting bullet. Although a few bullets are very versatile, most bullets are actually more specialized than you think. There's so many hunting bullets on the market today that a video covering all of them would be like three or four hours long and you wouldn't even watch it. Also, I won't be covering uh, highly specialized bullets like varmint bullets and dangerous game solids. So to simplify things for the purposes of this video, I plan on breaking down bullets into three categories. Basically fragmenting bullets, um, controlled expanding bullets, and deep penetrating bullets. Any bullet can kill any animal with perfect shot placement in the right spot. But in this video, we're talking about the right tool for the right job. So let's further discuss attributes of some of these hunting bullet categories. <clears throat> Fragmenting hunting bullets became super popular about 15 years ago. Basically, with the war in Iraq in full stride, Americans became absolutely infatuated and obsessed with the sniper. Civilian sniper and long-range shooting schools popped up by the hundreds all over the country. And soon, millions of bolt-action rifles had heavy barrels and night force optics and were shooting hand-loaded match-grade ammunition. You know what? It didn't take long for these guys to transition these skills into the hunting world. And before long, instead of stalking prey and using your skills against the animal's senses to get in close, people started shooting deer at a thousand yards away. This spawned a huge market for anything related to long-range shooting, and hunting bullets were no different. Most popular and dedicated hunting bullets at the time lacked the proper BCs and the proper design necessary for shooting at long ranges. So naturally, folks begin using and hunting with VLDs, Sierras, and Amaxes out in the field. You know, because at low velocities, these dedicated hunting rounds really didn't expand well at distance. But these rebranded target bullets and other fragmenting bullets did a great job at low velocities. So basically, if you plan to knock a deer on its ass at 800 yards, these bullets are your best option. The attributes that make these bullets fragment which is basically a thin non-bonded jacket, also makes these bullets extremely accurate and easy to load for. VLDs, Sierras, ballistic tips, and Amaxes are some of the easiest bullets to get consistent loads from. As a rule, when you move up to the bonded or monolithic bullets, it takes more work to get accuracy out of them, but these type of bullets, these rebranded target bullets, are e very easy to get accuracy out of, which is another big draw to these bullets. Just be mindful that these bullets have mixed and inconsistent results at higher velocities on tough targets. You know, a few years ago at a hunting lodge in South Africa, I believe it was three years ago, a couple guys in camp showed up with these custom 7 millimeter Magnums with uh, those huge Husqvarna scopes on them. 
These guys lost two Gemsbach with shoulder shots. They shot them at about 60, 70 yards. But basically, these bullets fragmented early and didn't penetrate deep enough after going through the shoulder for a kill. You know, after that, they almost lost a kudu the following day that took four shots to bring it down. You know, one of the guys finished out his hunt using the uh, PH's 30-06 that was shooting, you know, old school Nosler partitions. You know, uh, I saw the same thing on an Audad hunt uh, with a Sierra Game King about 10 years ago. You know, basically did the same thing. It blew up on the Audad shoulder and uh, he didn't get that thing. You know, but uh, these bullets have an absolutely horrible reputation in Africa, mainly because all the shots are shoulder shots on large animals at close range. And that really wasn't what these bullets were made for. When these bullets do get a clean kill on an animal at close range, they also tend to do massive meat damage. You know, which I don't really like. I've actually tried to like bullets like VLDs because they shoot so damn good out of just about every rifle I own. But uh, I was less than impressed with them on the pigs I shot with these at close ranges. So, you know, I still use these bullets for long range target shooting, but I basically retired them as hunting bullets. Expanding bullets are considered premium hunting bullets. Most hunters with a lot of experience know that a bullet that reliably expands and retains its weight gives the best balance between shock, tissue damage, and penetration. Most hunters prefer an expanding bullet that expels most of its energy inside the animal, yet will also give a complete pass-through. Velocity is the key to these bullets. You know, uh, high-velocity hits with these bullets result in adequate shock from the impact, adequate expansion to do tissue damage, and adequate penetration to pass through the animal and leave a good blood trail. Destruction, because They're also these extremely tough and reliable. These are probably the most reliable of all the hunting bullets. These types of bullets are basically for the hunter who stalks animals and kills game at reasonable hunting distances. But be mindful that these bullets can be very poor performers at low velocities with lightweight bullets. There's been many attempts over the last few years to turn these premium expanding bullets into long-range hunting bullets. Bullets like the uh, Acubon Long Range and the Barnes LRX are marketed as a long-range hunting bullet. You know, they do have improved BCs and a more streamlined profile, but you need to be mindful that these bullets are still made the same way as the rest of the lineup, and they still don't expand well at really low velocities. So don't think they do. Other than having poor performance at low velocities, another drawback to these premium expanding bullets is that usually they're more temperamental to load. Some are worse than others. You know, unlike the fragmenting bullets, these bonded core bullets and can be very picky to load. You know, load development on these things can be very painstaking. Trust me on that. And some barrels just won't like these bullets at all. You know, I find the Nosler Acubons in particular to be really tough to find a good load for. You know, Acubons perform very well on their target. I mean, it's a great premium hunting bullet that always expands, but be mindful that they can be very picky when it comes to powders, barrels, and seating depth. The monolithic bullets are now mandatory in places like California where lead bans are in effect. You know, I actually live in California 
And I've been hunting with these things from the beginning for about 15 years now. So, you know, at first I was very skeptical of these bullets. You know, I didn't want to give up my Nosler partitions or anything for these types of bullets. But uh, after using, especially after the uh, TTSX came out and then the LRX, you know, I was immediately impressed by these bullets. The real fact is that these mono bullets kill just as well as any other premium expanding bullet. And they're actually not a compromise at all. You know, you get expansion like that. I mean, that's, that's perfect. 99% weight retention too. I mean, this is what I want, especially I shoot through the shoulder and that's perfect. You know, this is about a 200 yard shot on a pig right there. I recovered it from the pig's spine and that's perfect. Just be mindful that these things do not perform well at really low velocities. This is a, about an 18, 1900 feet per second hit, and that's not good. So as long as you keep the velocity up on these mono bullets, they're actually not a compromise at all, and they work fantastic. Now, a couple of these expanding bullets are known to be extremely deep penetrators. You know, these bullets are expanding bullets by nature, but retain almost 100% of their weight and drive really deep into hard targets. You know, these bullets are made to kill the biggest and the baddest creatures on Earth. You know, the old school TSX, the Federal Bonded Trophy Bear Claw, North Forks, you know, and the venerable Swift A-Frame, you know, are the most widely used deep penetrating bullets. And it's no surprise that these are also the most utilized bullets for dangerous game in Africa. These types of bullets will just pencil through a soft skin antelope or deer, but they're almost mandatory on animals like elephant and cape buffalo. Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't there a more versatile bullet that performs well at both high and low velocities? Well, the answer is yes. But there's very few that are reliable at doing this. You know, the Hornaday Interlock and the original Corelock bullets are good examples of a bullet like this that, you know, will reliably open at those middle velocities but won't totally disintegrate at a high velocity. And, uh, you know, you'll get a little bit of the, uh, the mushrooming at low velocity too. So these are actually a good compromise bullet. But uh, then you have the king of the do-it-all bullets. The bullet that all other hunting bullets are measured against. The venerable and versatile Nosler Partition. The Nosler Partition has a forward section on it. See if you can see that diagram on their box right here. The partition has a forward section on it that fragments shortly after impact and a rear captured core that keeps driving a perfect mushroom all the way through the animal. Basically, these are fragmenting and expanding bullets all in one package. You know, these bullets have been used for 72 years now and still today, they're the gold standard by which all other hunting bullets are compared to. No other premium hunting bullet performs across high and low velocities like the Nosler Partition does. And no other bullet has as many one-shot kills probably as the Nosler Partition. You know, in a world where ammo companies now care more about ballistic coefficients than terminal effects when designing hunting bullets, you know, the old Nosler Partition defies the odds and keeps doing its job. You know... Older experienced hunters don't buy into all the marketing hype. They know that uh, BCs don't matter when you have the skill to stalk and kill an animal within 300 yards in any environment. You know, in a world where the partition should be outdated, it continues to be the most widely utilized hunting bullet because it flat out works in the real world. The durability of an animal 
is also a very important aspect to consider. Fragmenting bullets like these will absolutely destroy a pronghorn antelope. I mean, especially with that classic uh, behind-the-shoulder heart-lung shot on soft tissue, it'll just liquefy the insides of those things and just drop it right there. But, you know, fragmenting bullets like this won't even reach the vitals on an animal like a cape buffalo. And you take a lot you know, of the big plains game there, and you really need a tough, controlled, expanding bullet that'll retain energy and keep driving through tough hide and bone better than these fragmenting bullets will. Meat damage is something that few novice hunters consider before choosing a bullet. Fragmenting bullets like these can produce some of the most instant and dramatic kills you've ever seen on soft targets. I mean, I've seen these bullets completely turn the inside of deer and pronghorn to mush after the bullet explodes and the tiny fragments tear through all the soft tissue. The problem is that huge amounts of meat are bloodshot and basically destroyed as a result. Also, you know, who wants all these tiny chunks of lead inside their meat when they eat it? You know, basically if meat yield is important to you, an expanding bullet is a better choice here. Personally, I'd rather have a deer run 25 yards and die with little meat damage than have them flop dead right there and die instantly and lose precious pounds of delicious venison. For many years, a lot of hunters hated really fast rounds like the 257 Weatherby and even the 25 out 6 because with the bullets available at the time, they just obliterated the meat on small deer and antelope. You know, but then came bullets like the uh, TSX and TTSX that absolutely thrive at these high velocities. And uh, all of a sudden, hunters fell in love with the barrel burner cartridges again because uh, they can get quick kills still with these high velocity cartridges, but they were no longer destroying large amounts of meat. I used to shoot bullets through water jugs and homemade gelatin blocks a lot. I stopped doing that for one big reason though, and that's that in reality it proves very little. Gel tests have become nothing but uh, a marketing tool for bullet manufacturers to prove their own bias points, basically. If you set it up right, you can make a gel test say whatever you want. You know, it's no different than a political poll on CNN. A lot of manufacturers of target bullets found out that they could shoot their target bullets into gel and get these huge explosive wound channels that are two to three times wider than expanding bullets. You know, hey, it looks cool on a slow motion camera, but the fact is that it doesn't always translate well into real-world hunting. Bullet manufacturers found that they could play with gelatin formulas or pick the best-looking test at hundreds of attempts in order to advertise their product better. In the end, gel and water jug tests are only useful for one thing. You know, multiple tests of the same bullets can give you a good idea of its, of its uh, reliability or failure rate. Bullets like Acubons and Scirocco's and TTSX's and Swift A-frames, you know, they're super reliable as long as the velocity is in the right range for them. If you do perform gel or water jug tests, make sure... You do them at the distances you plan on hunting at. You know, I do almost all of my gel and water jug tests at 100 yards in my old videos because that's where most of my shots were taken. 
You know, and when I did a lot of these gel tests back on my old YouTube channel, you know, bullets like the VLD and the Sierra Game King were all over the place. I mean, sometimes they pretty much explode into tiny fragments like that. As a matter of fact, that's what they usually did at 100 yards. You know, sometimes a large portion of the bullet would actually form into a nice mushroom and get some penetration, you know, and sometimes they almost didn't come apart at all and would look like little bananas sitting in the gel, you know. In my mind, at close ranges, these bullets just aren't reliable at high velocities, in my opinion. You know, and even though these gel tests and water jug tests, you know, are, are fun to watch, you know, these videos will tell you very little about real-world performance on live animals. I mean, there's so many unknowns and so many variables that go into bullet performance on a living animal that you can't possibly replicate it in real life, you know? So, you know, these videos of gel tests and blowing up water jug and exploding watermelons and other pieces of fruit, you know, they're fun to watch, but in the end, Take it with a grain of salt because they don't tell you a lot about real-world performance on live animals. And also, don't get hung up on concepts like hydrostatic shock, which has more to do with velocity, the size of the animal, and quite frankly, luck. Your main goal is to cause rapid and massive blood loss in the animal. You know, even if hydrostatic shock knocks the animal down instantly, it's the actual blood loss that really kills the animal. So put that bullet in a spot where it's gonna cause the most rapid blood loss, you know, and, and make sure the impact velocity is in the right range for the bullet to work as designed. Now I wanna kinda of specify what I meant when I talked about hunting bullet hype. You know, basically, you turn on any hunting show on TV or you read any hunting or gun magazine and you're just inundated with constant ads about bullets like the ELDX. You know, they're going to tell you this is a better bullet because it's got these fantastic BCs and it has a special tip on it that won't melt in flight. You know, and you have to have this bullet. This is the greatest bullet ever invented. But... You know, these attributes that make this almost a match-grade bullet really don't mean anything when you're shooting an animal at 300 yards or less. As a matter of fact, this ELDX bullet is not even a bonded bullet. I mean, it's basically, for all intents and purposes, a glorified interlock. I mean, they basically have the same bullet construction. So, you know, I've shot these things into gel and to real animals too. And these bullets, if at 200 yards, you're lucky to get 30, 40% weight retention on these. You know, you shoot these things out to 400, 450 yards, and you're lucky to get 50, maybe 60% weight retention on these. So as a hunting bullet at real hunting Practical hunting distances, I'll tell you the truth. I think the old school inner bond is actually a better hunting bullet than the ELDXs. That's just my opinion. And just remember and keep this in perspective the best hunting bullets weren't designed by scientists and laboratories or ballisticians taking Doppler radar readings of bullets at long ranges. The best hunting bullets were designed by hunters like John Nosler and Randy Brooks that knew how a bullet needed to perform in the real world. We're pretty lucky today in that we have so many great options for hunting bullets. 
You know, we have bullets that perform well at long ranges, bullets that perform well at closer ranges, you know, bullets for big, tough animals, and bullets for soft, light skin game, you know, and bullets that do a little bit of everything. Ninety-nine percent of hunters are going to be happy with a premium bonded expanding bullet or a nozzle or partition. This is because most shots on game are taken well within 250 yards and your typical expanding bullet is going to perform exceptionally well within that distance. You know, I'm an experienced competition long range shooter and for decades I've been competition shooting and long range shooting. You know, a thousand yard shot is pretty easy for me. And I was doing it long before it became the cool thing to do and everybody became an armchair sniper. But when I hunt, I try to harvest my animals on their terms, which means using my skills against the animal's senses and instincts to get as close as I can. You know, at these distances, good expanding bullets have performed exceptionally for me without destroying large amounts of precious wild game meat either. But for those who have the skill, equipment, and desire to kill animals at long distances, there's a number of fantastic bullets to choose from nowadays, you know, especially from companies like Berger. You know, not only will these bullets perform well at lower impact velocities, but they'll also have attributes that help mitigate wind drift at these extended distances. You know, there's a bullet to fit every need nowadays, but there's still no best hunting bullet for everything. So bullets are still specialized hardware. So remember, you can have the most expensive hunting rifle in the world. You can have the best optics money could buy. You could be an expert at shooting and have unmatched skills at shooting, but in the end, it's the bullet that kills the animal. There's really no excuse not to use a good quality hunting bullet to stack the odds in your favor and ethically get a quick, clean kill on your prey. Well, I want to thank you for enduring another one of my videos. I hope you enjoyed watching and enjoyed the content. And as always, good hunting.